The world waited in anticipation for a saviour and a king. Hundreds of years before his birth, there were whispers of the blessings he would bring. The Prince of Peace, hope to a broken place. When will he be here? When will we finally see his face? As time ticked by, the longing grew for something great and something new. A pure young woman would be the one, destined to be the mother of God's one and only son. Did every woman in Bethlehem wonder, could it be me imagining what might be? With growing expectation of when the time would come, the world yearned for the news of the boy born to be the one. Then one day, a woman received a surprising visit. An angel told her she was with child because of the Holy Spirit. This boy was to be named Jesus, the long-awaited Messiah, whose birth had been foretold hundreds of years before by a prophet called Isaiah. His stable birth did not reflect the riches he deserved. There was no crowd to welcome him, only animals to observe. The brightest star in the sky drew his visitors ever closer, as the hearts of the world sighed with relief. Joy to the world. The wait is over.
Because, you know, we've just been singing about the goodness of God. The goodness of God that sees us through every season of our lives. The good, the bad, and the ugly. The times that we don't understand what is going on. He's a God who is still with us. And I'm very much aware today that people who are in this place, who are going through really dark times right now, but it doesn't change the fact that God is still with you and that God is with us. And today I want to take the opportunity for us, the church, the body, the family of God to pray with individuals. So today we recognize that today is a significant day because three years ago today, Pastor Simon passed away. Today we want to pray for Mick and Jeanette who are with us today, for Lisa, for Miles and for Edith and for Adam and Bridget. We want to pray that that family would know the embrace of God. Yes. I just found out this morning that this week that Joan lost her brother very, very suddenly. Joan, we want to stand with you today. We want to pray that you'd know God's comfort and that you'd know God's peace. For Steph today who lost her dad this week. Again, we want to pray that she would know the embrace of Father God. And I realize when I start to talk like this, there'll be people who are saying right now that I've gone through this this week, or this is what's going on in my life right now. I may not be aware of what's going on in your life, but God knows. And He is the God of all comfort. He's a God of all peace. So I just wonder if you have stood next to one of those people that have just been mentioned, it may be that they're people that are really close to you. We go stand with them right now that we want them to know today they are not standing alone, but we are standing with them and praying that God will minister his peace and his presence very real into their lives today. So come on, we'll just remain standing in this atmosphere. And you may not be able to get close to those people today, but you know those people. Can we just lift them up to God in our prayers right now? Come on, just lift them up to God, praying that God will minister His peace and His presence. Today I'm aware of stuff that is secret to some people, but it's not a secret to God. He knows everything today. I love what the psalmist David said. He said, if I go up to the heights, you are there. If I go down into the depths, you are there. There's nowhere where I can go from your presence. So Father God, I thank you that you are the God of peace that you are the God of all comfort. And Father, today I pray for those people right now who've gone through loss, who've gone through suffering. God, I pray, Lord, that you would embrace them in such a beautiful and such a precious way. God, I thank you that you know all things. And God, I pray today, may they know your presence. May they know Emmanuel, you are with them. And God, I thank you as the psalmist David proclaimed that even though we pass through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with us. You are with us. And God, that we can be still and know that you are God. That even though everything around about us is shaken, God, you are the one who is unshakable. Father, minister to your people. God, may they hear your voice above every circumstance. Above the waves today, God, may they hear your voice. Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace, we love you. Bless you, just take your seats just where you are, but we're just going to keep in this atmosphere. You know, I'm going to ask Ursula to come. She's going to need to be pushed here, I think, but... Yeah, just keep playing with you. It's just lovely. We may just go back into that just in a little while, but...
just a moment, we're going to pray for a very special little girl. But many of you know Ursula. Ursula's been a member of this church for more than, for over 40 years. 79, but you know, family of Ursula, come out here. Because you know, Ursula stood for so long. But it's amazing to see her family here today. Absolutely amazing. But Ursula said to me, because in a moment we're going to pray for this beautiful little girl, Matea. We're going to pray for Dad. Because you've been through some heartache. You've been through some pain and for some sorrow. But you know, God loves you today. God cares. You're going to tell? Morning, everybody. Morning. This is my last daughter, Matea. She's due to have an operation next week. Come on. Matea's been born with cerebral palsy, chronic lung disease. Come on. Jesus. Her mother's passed away February this year. Come on. I'd like you all just to pray for her. Matea over. God makes a way for her. Come on. Okay. That's all I can say. Thank you very much. Come on. <laughs> Courtney, let me just tell you, my brother has got cerebral palsy. And my brother today, he's 48. And many people say he's a walking miracle. And what my God has done for my brother Tim, we're believing today that God can do for Matea. That God is able to bring about a miracle in this beautiful little girl's life. I don't think Ursula will mind me saying this, but you know, Ursula today felt that God spoke to her. And in Mark chapter 2, there's an incident that took place when Jesus was in the house. And he was speaking and the house was absolutely rammed with people. And there was, a, there was four men who wanted to bring their friend to Jesus. A man who was lame, a man who needed a miracle in his life. And they couldn't get into the house, so they, they took him up onto the roof and they began to dig through the roof. And an opening came and they let down this man into the very front of where Jesus was. And it said this, when Jesus saw their faith, when Jesus saw their faith, that man was healed on that day. And I wonder today, can we raise some faith within us in this room today that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. And I don't mind being emotional right now because my Bible tells me that we are to weep with those who weep and we're called to rejoice with those who rejoice. And we are weeping with this family today who've been through loss, have been through sorrow. But we're believing that although weeping may last for a night, joy comes in the morning. And we're praying today, let your joy come to this family in the name of Jesus. So can we stand right now? And I want to encourage you, if you've got faith today to reach out your hand to Matei today. I'm going to ask our, our leaders to come and surround this family today. Some of you are close friends to Ursula. You've journeyed through this, with this family through some dark days, but you know, we believe that he is the light of the world. Come on, lift up your voices right now. Come on, let's call on heaven in these moments. Jesus in your name, Jesus in your name. Jesus in your name. Yeah, come on, anoint with oil, absolutely. Come on, church, let's pray, come on. Let's have the faith level rise in this place that our God is able. Our God is able. Our God is able. Our God is able. Oh, God, yes, Lord Jesus, in your name, I pray, Father. Miracle working, God, answer prayer, I pray in the name of Jesus. Minister your life and minister your healing in Jesus' name, Father. I pray that you touch every ounce of Matthias' body in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you, there's power in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray that you would perform a miracle in Matthias' life for the glory and honor of God. You said, suffer the little children to come unto me. You took the 
children in your arms. You place your hands on them and you bless them. And Father, we pray for Medea today. Lord, will you place your hand upon her life? That hand that brings healing. That hand that brings life, Father. I pray, Father, that you would touch it today. God, I pray for Dad today. Father, I pray for Courtney. I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, that you would comfort him today, that you'd be all that he stands in need of. I pray for all of this family, Father, that in the darkness that your light would break down into their lives and that the glory of God would be seen. Thank you, Father, that you hear our prayers today. And we say amen and amen in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, in Jesus' name, Father. In Jesus' name, I pray, Father. Come on, we're going to keep worshiping Ian. Come on, lead us. Come on, lead us. Thank you, Jesus.
just want to declare in faith. Come on. You are a way maker. Yes, Lord. You are a miracle worker. And we stand on your yes, promises. Lord. You are the promise keeper. Yes, Lord. Lord, we come before you this morning. We lift these needs to you this yes, morning. Lord. We lift this family before you this morning. That you would come Jesus. to what only you can do. Yes, Lord. What only you can do. Yes, Lord, you are able. to be together so good to be able to worship God together so good to be able to be family together it really is great to be together today I'm going to try and rush through this because I was told that last Sunday you finished on time and I did say to people that told me that when I became the pastor nobody told me a time I didn't realize a time existed apart from moving in the spirit. So we'll see what happens anyway. But I'm going to try because we've got a number of things that we need to and want to do today. I don't know if you realize, but today's the first Sunday of Advent. Yay. Yay. Somebody's excited. Simon, thank you for being excited about that. Everybody else seemed really like disappointed. Oh no, four weeks today, it is Christmas Day. But anyway, today is the first Sunday of Advent. And it's my privilege on this, the first Sunday of Advent, to launch our Christmas series for this year, The Wait Is Over. You know, that song that we sang right near the commencement of today hasn't been taken from here, there, and anywhere. It's actually been birthed. It's been written out of our worship team today. I think that's amazing. The wait is over. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be declaring that in different ways, in different forms. Because although I know that Advent is all about waiting, the reality is that today we live in the light that the true meaning, the true story of what Christmas is truly all about is that the wait is over. You know, for hundreds and hundreds of years, people had waited for the fulfillment of what had been promised. They were waiting for the Messiah. They were waiting for their Savior. They were waiting for the Redeemer, the one of whom the prophets have spoken about. In Isaiah chapter 9 and verses 6 and 7, hopefully the the verses will be on the screen for you. It says, therefore, to us a child is born. 
To us, a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. What hope? came from the words of the prophet Isaiah. That when Isaiah proclaimed those words, he was declaring another day was yet to come. There was going to be a day when Almighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace would come and visit this earth and change this earth and change the world forever. He spoke of this in in the newer part of Isaiah, it says there'll be no more gloom for those who are in darkness because the people walking in darkness are going to see an incredible light and those living in the land of deep darkness, a light was going to dawn. There was a better day that was coming. Because they were living in darkness, they were living in doom, they were living in gloom. But there was a coming a day when there would be no gloom. Why? Because Jesus Christ, the light of the world, was going to burst into history. The world was never going to be the same again. And therefore, it's no wonder that so many people lived in eager anticipation for the Messiah. They were longing, they were waiting for the day when the Messiah would come. The one whom Micah spoke of, another prophet. And this Micah, he prophesied in Micah 5 and verse 2, he says, But you, Bethlehem, though you are small, That out of you will come for me one who'll be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. Again, Micah was talking about the one who was to come and that he would literally be born in Bethlehem. What insight, what revelation the prophet Micah had that even though Bethlehem was just somewhere in a back stable, as it were, out be back there somewhere, that out of Bethlehem would come the Messiah, the one who would rule over Israel in such a wonderful way. The one who, according to the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah 33 and verse 15, be of David's line, he would do what is just and right in the land. All of these prophets were talking about the one who was to come, the Messiah, the Redeemer, the Savior of the world. And for some 500 years, 600 years, 700 years, these people were waiting for the fulfillment of the promise. They were waiting for the fulfillment of what the prophets had spoken about, the promised one. And yet God remained silent. And yet all of a sudden, the silence was broken. As God himself gave a sign that was, the wait was nearly over. God brought a sign to the people that literally the wait was nearly over. The sign was no less than that which had been spoken again hundreds of years before through the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 7 and verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and you will call him Emmanuel. God is with us. So for hundreds of years, nothing happened. And yet all of a sudden, there was a virgin who was with child Mary. And what a way for God to break the silence. As an angel appeared to that young virgin girl, Mary, and proclaimed unto her in Luke 1 and verse 31, you will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. It was an exact fulfillment 
of what the prophet Isaiah has spoken about earlier. And in so doing, once again, God approved true what he said unto the angel when he said these words in Luke 1 verse 37, no word from God will ever fail. What God has spoken will never, ever fail. Isaiah has spoken about it. Jeremiah has spoken about it. Micah has spoken about it. Other people in the Old Testament have prophesied about Jesus was coming. And the angel speaks unto Mary and says, No word from God will ever fail. God's word always always comes to pass even though it may be a long time coming I want to say to people today I want to urge you because I have a sense within me today that you need to know that no word from God will ever ever fail if it's a word from God it will never ever fail you know, as we were praying in our pre-service, by the way, if you want to come and join us at half nine, we have a great time. I tell you what, we worship together, we pray together. It's absolutely amazing. And this morning at half nine, as we were doing that worshiping together, and I wasn't thinking about what I was going to speak on today, but you know what God began to do for me? He began to bring back some of the words that God has spoken over my life. And I'm talking about 30 odd years ago now. I know I don't look old enough, but 30 odd years ago, some of the things that God spoke over my life and they haven't been fulfilled yet, but God brought them back to remembrance for me today. And I'm holding on to the word of God because God's word will never, ever fail. Even though you cannot see it, even though you may not see God working, I want to tell you, God is still working behind the scenes of time. And you can come and say to me, it will never happen, but listen. I'm not so interested in what you say. I'm interested in what God said. And God has made some promises over my life. And therefore, I'm going to hold on to the promises of God Almighty. Because no word from God will ever, ever fail. And sometimes we need to hear that in a fresh and a new way. If ever there was a man who held on to the promises of God... He's a man that so often we overlook. I must be honest, I don't know if I've ever spoken about this man before and preached about him, but it's a man called Simeon. If you've got your Bibles, Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, and I'm going to read from verse 22 to today. Luke 2 and verse 22, it will be on the screen for you as well. Thank you, Stuart, for doing a great job at the back there. Luke 2, 22, when the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses. Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the force of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. You know, from what Luke writes here, it's very clear that this man, Simeon, was a man who was righteous and he was a man who was devout. 
In other words, Simeon was a man who was truly a godly man who wouldn't allow himself to be distracted or diverted in the waiting because God has spoken to him and said, you will not die until you see the Messiah, to use my terminology. You won't, you won't die until you see the Redeemer come. And Simeon was a man who remained devoted to God, the promise maker, in the resolute belief that he is the promise keeper. The New Living Translation version tells us that in verse 25 that Simeon was eagerly waiting for the Messiah to come and restore Israel. The thing was, as Simeon was a man who waited, he remained watered. He was a man who waited for that which God has spoken. And as he remained in that place of waiting, he remained watered. In other words, the Holy Spirit was upon him. And I want to say to us today, if we are in that time of waiting for that which God has promised to us, we need to remain watered as well as waiting. We need to be watered by God's Holy Spirit. What does it say in Psalm 1? Blessed is the man. And that man is a man who is situated by the waters of God's Holy Spirit. That whatever he does prospers. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is upon that person, is within that person. I want to tell you, in our waiting, we need to be watered by God's Holy Spirit. And it was this same Holy Spirit that had revealed to Simeon that he would not die before he had seen the Messiah. The thing for Simeon was that the clock was ticking. You know, for all of us, like it or not, the clock is ticking. And for Simeon, the clock was ticking. And yet there were, he still hadn't seen that which had been promised for his life. There wasn't a lot of time left. And even though this was the case, he was a man who kept in step with the Spirit. Why? Because he was devout to his God. Because in the time of waiting, he did not allow himself to be distracted or diverted, but he remained devout to his God. And I want to encourage us today to be a people who in a time of waiting, we keep on walk, being watered by God's Holy Spirit and we keep on walking in the Spirit of God. For us as a church today, in our time of waiting, let's keep watered and let's keep walking in the spirit of the living God. And for Simeon, he was that man. Because verse 27 tells us that moved by the spirit, he went into the temple courts. It says in the New Living Translation version, that day the spirit led him into the temple. For every single one of us, we need to be led by the Spirit of God. And for Simeon, even though he must have been at the temple so many times, because the Spirit of God came upon him and moved him, prompted him, urged him, what did he do? He went to the temple on this day. And if he had ignored the prompting, the nudge of God's Holy Spirit, he would have missed out on so much. I wonder, church, how many times have you and I missed out on what God has for us because we've missed the nudge, the urge of God's Holy Spirit? Because we've wanted to stay where we are rather than move with what God wants us to do. I'm okay, God, here. Yes, there is a time to be still and know that God is God, but there's a time when we need to simply move and we need to go out into deep waters at times. I remember when we said we were moving here, one of our pastors at Northampton, we got people that joined us from Northampton, but Jason Heron said to me, there's no going back now. There's no going back. And we've had to follow the leading of God's Holy Spirit. And for Simeon, he followed the leading of God's Holy Spirit. And he went to probably a place that was very familiar to him. A place they've been to many times, but it's going to be different this day. Because all of a sudden, somebody was going to come into the midst 
of the temple on that day. I want to tell you, don't ignore the familiar places. People say, but you know what? I've been going to rugby Elim for 55 years now. And I tell you what, I've heard the best of the preachers and I've had the best of the songs and everything else. I don't need it anymore. Listen, it might just be the day that you say that is when you miss out on a visitation of God's Holy Spirit. When you miss out a visitation of what God had promised and it hasn't come to pass and therefore you stay away. But it could just be that is the day when something of the glory and the majesty and the splendor of God is revealed in a way like you've never seen it before. And for Simeon, nudged, urged, moved by the Spirit, he went up to the temple courts and as he went up to the temple courts the parents two young parents something that many parents would have done many times in accordance with the law but on this day it was different because this baby wasn't just any ordinary baby that was being brought to the temple courts. It was none other than the Messiah, the Redeemer, the one whom the prophets had spoken about. And it was Mary and Joseph. As they brought baby Jesus, who was probably about 40 days old at this point. My guess is that to many people, they just thought, he's just another boy. They're just Another set of parents. But you know what? Simeon saw through the eyes of faith. And something leapt within him. Something leapt with him in because, you know, Simeon knew that this was not just any ordinary boy, but this is the savior of the world. What gave him the right to do what he did on that day? We don't know. You can... You can try and guess why he did what he did, but for Simeon, there was no holding back. He took Jesus in his arms. He embraced the promise. I want to encourage you today that even though disappointments have come and delays have come, listen, keep on embracing the promise. And for Simeon on this day, even though he'd waited for so many years, and probably the enemy was whispering in his ear, you're never going to see the day of the Messiah, the one who's going to come and rule over Israel. There was something within him that said, this is the day. This is the moment. The promise is in our midst. And he embraced the promise. He took Jesus in his arms. What a moment. What a moment. The Bible says that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives and dwells within us. I want to tell you, I'm carrying the promise today. If you've been born again by the Spirit of God and been filled with Holy Spirit, you are carrying the promise. We're carrying the promise. And some of us need to awaken to it. And if you're not carrying the promise, the promise is for every single one of us. That we don't need to wait any longer. We just need to walk in the promise. We need to walk with the promise. And we need to see the promise just come out in such an incredible way that he makes a difference to our world today. Because we are carriers of the very promise of God. For Simeon, he embraced the promise. And then you know what happens next? He is totally and absolutely overwhelmed. Totally and absolutely overwhelmed. And therefore he prays God. Verses 29 to 32 in the New Living Translation. He prays God saying, Sovereign Lord, now let your servant die in peace as you have promised. I have seen your salvation which you have prepared for all people. He is the light to reveal God to the nations. And he is the glory of your people Israel. I wonder what other people might have been thinking around on that day. But you know what? I what for Simeon, he didn't care less what anybody else was thinking. People were saying, oh, "What's he on about? He's just a baby." And yet, for Simeon, he was declaring, 
I've seen your salvation. I've seen the light revealed to God to all the nations through this child. He is the one who's the glory of the people of Israel. Simeon, in his declaration of praise, was declaring, the wait is over, the Savior has come. The revelation that Simeon received, re- received had to come out in praise. I want to tell you, church, if we can't get excited about the Messiah, who can get excited? Do we realize that our Savior has come? Do we realize that the hope of the world is in our midst through the person, through the power of God's Holy Spirit? Let me say to you today what I'm a little bit fed up of. Is that okay? Let me just get it out. Why at Christmas time, Christians very often go into the shell. We don't want to upset anybody around us. We don't want to upset people that come to the carol service. Let me tell you folks, what I want this Christmas is... I want us to be like Simeon of old, who who embraced the promise. And actually, we can't help ourselves but declare the praises of God Almighty, that our Savior has come. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Oh, come, Emmanuel. Let us bow down and worship him. Why? Because he is the King of kings and he is the Lord of lords. Let me tell you, I don't believe that is a time to be silent but rather I believe is a time to shout our praise to God Almighty it really is thank you George it's a time for us to release our praise before God and we listen to the lie of the enemy but listen to what the word of God declares in Psalm 8 and verse 2 that out of the mouths of infants and babes God has ordained praise to silence the foe and the avenger this Christmas church I want us to be a people like Simeon who are not ashamed to embrace the promise and declare the praises of God Almighty. Many will see and many will hear and many will fear and put their trust in God. Why? Because they hear and they see what God has done in our lives in such a wonderful way. I love what it says in verse 33. As a team are coming back, the child's mother and father marveled at what was said about him. Listen, let me say this, Rugby Elam. In all that we do in the next few weeks, we're not here to entertain. We are not here to entertain. We're not here that people go away and say, you know what, that was really nice. I really enjoyed that. I want people to go away and go, what on earth was that? That they marvel with eyes wide open and go, wow, what on earth have those people got that I haven't got? What have they seen that I haven't seen? I want my eyes to be opened like that. Mary and Joseph, they marvel at what they heard Simeon proclaim and they say, what on earth? What on earth? Wouldn't it be amazing if this Christmas that people marveled because they looked at us and they heard the praise of God coming out of us like never before. Some of you got it. Some of you have it. Some of you are like, I'm not sure. I'm embracing the promise. I'm embracing the promise. And I'm praising God for his incredible promise. And for some of you today who've been in that waiting period and the enemy said it will never happen, come on, stand upon the word of God because all of God's promises are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. I'm standing on the promise of God today. So we're going to stand together right now. Come on, let's stand. But as we stand, I'm going to ask that you just close your eyes just for a very few moments. Because you know what? There's people in this place today and you've never embraced Jesus, your Savior. You've never embraced the one who is the Prince of Peace, the one who is Emmanuel, the one who is God with you. And as heads are bowed and eyes are closed in this place, 
If that's you right now, I'm going to lead you in a very short prayer that says today, I want to embrace the promise. I want to embrace the gift of Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. If that's you in your heart, pray this prayer after me. Dear Father God, thank you for the promise of Jesus. Thank you that you came to be my peace, to be my joy, to be my light in the darkness. Thank you that I do not need to wait any longer, but today I can embrace you, that I can receive you into my life. Thank you, Father, for the gift of Jesus. His heads are bowed and eyes closed. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, I'm going to ask you to do something right now that everything within you is going to say, don't do it. But if you prayed that prayer and you mean it from your heart and you're saying it for the first time today, or maybe you're returning to God, you've been away from God. You know, you may have been away from God, but God's never been away from you. All He is, is a whisper away. And if that's you right now, I'm going to ask you to put your hand in the air so that I can see it. And then I'm going to pray. Thank you. God bless you. Come on. There's more people in this place. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Come on. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Come on. Thank you. Anybody else before I pray? Come on. Thank you. God bless you, man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I'm going to pray right now. Father, thank you for these people that have raised their hands today. God, I thank you that salvation is in the house today. And God, I pray for peace to come in Jesus' name. I pray for joy to come in Jesus' name. I pray turn their lives around for the glory and honour of Jesus Christ. That they would walk different from today onwards. Because now they know you in such a beautiful way. And all God's people said... Come on, let's praise God right now. God is so good. Come on, yes. Yes, Lord.
declare. Come on. amongst us. Let me tell you, I decided years ago that I would never shout more about anything else than I shout for Jesus. I made that promise to Jesus when I was about 17 years old. I want to tell you, I've kept it to this point. So I can shout sometimes loud for England. Always. By the way, (laughs) no, by the way, for those who are wondering, House of Prayer is still on Tuesday night, okay? And let me say, there's more men normally at our prayer meeting than there are ladies. That is so unique for church. I don't know another church where there's more men at a prayer meeting than ladies. So men, don't let me down on Tuesday night. It's only a football game. Tell you what, this is more important than football. What we are doing, we're about souls. I'm not talking about them kind of souls. I'm talking about souls of men and women. So... But anyway, I made that promise, so I'll never shout more. You know, it's great. You know, today we've got our children, got our, our young people in. I think our tots are in as well. They are. Let me just say this to you. I was given a prophetic word many years ago. Sam and I, were, we were hosting a, a weekend away, church weekend away. We're in Birmingham. And, and we had this great couple that came to minister that weekend. And this guy gave this amazing prophetic word. I can't remember anything about it. But I think it was really good. But I can't remember. But then he said this one line, and this one line I haven't been able to forget. And it was this, and he said, he said it this way. He said, listen, he said, this may not be God, but if it is, take it. If it's not, just scrap it. It's the only bit that I've remembered. And it was this, enjoy the journey more. Enjoy the journey. Because you know, sometimes I can get so consumed with the destination that I don't enjoy the journey along the way. And the truth is that as I have the privilege of pastoring this amazing church at this moment in time, it can be so easy to focus on where we're going that we don't celebrate the journey along the way. But today we're going to do that. We're going to celebrate something of what God has done not only over this past year, but 85 years. I didn't realize, Jackie, that we are 85 years old this week. Oh, anyway. You know, we are 85. We'll be 
be healing. We as a church are 85. But you know what? I don't believe that we're like some churches of 85 that are like struggling to stand. I don't believe that we've got crutches out because I believe that we are being consumed by God's Holy Spirit. But you know the reality is today that we can stand on the history of so many people that have dedicated their lives for the cause of the gospel here in rugby. And today I can't mention them all by name because I don't know all of them by name. But you know, today I want to say thank you, God, for every single person that have given of their lives in order that we can have a today and we can have a tomorrow. For those who sacrificially have given of their finances, who sacrificially given of their time and their talents and, and have just blessed so many people. Some of those people are still here on earth, but they're no longer able to be in our midst. I thank God for those individuals. I thank God for all those people that have gone before us and names of people will come to our memories right now. Thank God for every single one of them. But you know, at the front here today, we've got a couple of arches with balloons that are popping as we're worshiping Jesus. But one is, what a year. I want to encourage you to look at the screen right now as we take time to celebrate what a year. Thank you. Break through over identity. 
I love the fact that one young man there stood and clapped. Amen. Come on. Wow. You know, every picture they say tells a story. Yeah. What a story. What a story. You know, January this year, I remember it was Baptism Sunday. I proclaimed, what a day. And then Sean said to me, what a month. But what a year that we've experienced by the grace and the goodness of God. But you know, something that's come alive within me is this, what a decade. That I'm believing that this decade could be an amazing decade in God. Whatever the next, you know, if you include this year, what could it happen in the next nine years? What will we look like? Now, I know we're going to look older. <laughs> but what are we going to look like? I have a sense within me, we as a leadership, I have a sense within us where we feel God is taking us. We're not going to look like this. Come on. We're not going to look like this. Because you know what? We're going to continue to be the church without walls. That is presence-led, mission-minded, and kingdom-focused. We are not going to be contained. But we're going to keep on going after God. And just what's going to happen is we're going to sing a final song together. And then we're going to have coffee and cake. We've got some special cake today, all right? And then at half past 12-ish, we will reconvene in here for half an hour of our official AGM, annual general meeting. We've got some special announcements to make. So if you want to hear it, stay. If you don't want to hear it, go home. But don't blame me then if you don't know about what's going on around here, okay? Honestly, you can stay or you can go. But today is about putting a marker in the ground and saying, God, we thank you for all that you've done. But there's a sense within us that the best is yet to come in God. Because, you know, we serve a God who's able to do abundantly more than we can ask or imagine according to his glorious power that is at work within us. We are looking forward in faith and in anticipation of all of God's promises that are going to be fulfilled in our lives collectively together. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to invite you to stand right now. And, and we're going to sing a song that we sang a few weeks ago. This song you cannot sing when you, when you don't move a little bit for those of you able to move. Because it's a song that says every praise. And all of that stuff that we've seen over the past year, all the praise and all the glory doesn't go to man. We thank God for man. We thank God for people. But actually all the praise goes to God. And so we're going to lift up every praise to our God today. And what I've done today is that we've got the bookies at the front because you know what? I know some of you like to move. All right? So I'll encourage you. If you want to move, begin to move. Break out into the aisles. Break out into the back. Break out into the front. And if you've got your tithes and your offerings and you want to come and place it in the bucket, will you come and do that? But come on, let this place erupt in praise to our God. Yes.